while ago, I wondered, what would my life be like without the use of my hands? How would I put food to my mouth or brush my teeth? How would I embrace someone I cared about or wipe away a tear? Many of us have never had to think about what that would be like. As a fashion designer, I rely on my hands every day. Since I was about 10, I've been creating clothes. At 19, straight out of fashion college, I started my own brand. I was young, eager, and inexperienced. Needless to say, it wasn't easy, but I loved what I was doing. There was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. I learned through my mistakes, and I made a lot of them. I persevered, though, and made a strong name for myself designing high-end fashion collections. Over the years, my work was featured in major magazines next to the best brands in the world. I was asked to create wardrobes for many A-listers, such as Meryl Streep, David Bowie, Jason Momoa, Jennifer Lopez, and many, many others. I was living the dream. Little did I know that one phone call was going to change the trajectory of my career and life. In 2005, I was contacted by a woman named Barbara Turnbull, who was looking for a custom piece of clothing. Barb was a wheelchair user, and she needed this piece to work while seated in her chair. I never thought a piece of clothing wouldn't work for someone while they were sitting in a wheelchair. I see people wearing clothing all the time while seated, and it doesn't seem to be a problem. While working with Barb, my eyes were opened to the clothing challenges people face while living with a physical disability. In 1982, Barb was a shooting victim of a convenience store robbery where she worked. She was 18 years old, shot in the back of the neck, and left for dead while the robbers got $300 out of the till. Barb survived and became quadriplegic from the shooting, meaning she was paralyzed from where the bullet entered her neck all the way down to her toes. The robbers were caught and got 15 years in jail. Barb, however, got a life sentence living with the injuries she sustained that night. I agreed to make this piece for her. I'd never worked for someone who was paralyzed or for someone who used a wheelchair. We discussed what this piece needed to be from both a function and fashion perspective. Working with Barb was an eye-opening experience. I didn't realize that people living with a physical, dif physical disability had different clothing needs than myself or that clothing was either difficult or in some cases impossible to wear. Every time I'd seen someone with a disability, they were dressed, but what I didn't realize is what it actually took to get dressed. I began to see just how limited clothing options were for someone like Barb. I came to understand that many people with disabilities often wore loose-fitting clothing, sometimes a size or two larger, simply because they were easier to get on and that many are at the mercy of others to dress them. Until that point, I had never thought about it. I learned that certain clothing details could be life-threatening. Pressure sores can develop. If undetected or left untreated for too long, pressure sores could eventually lead to blood poisoning, then death. For Barb, clothing had to be carefully thought through. Clothing was a challenge, a struggle, and a disappointment, as some items were not even an option at all. The more I worked with Barb, I became so much more respectful and compassionate for people living with a physical disability. Barb explained in an article she was interviewed for that when she was recovering in the hospital, she was told that from now on, she needed to dress in clothes that were easy for her attendant to dress her in. When I read that, I thought to myself, she was told to make it easy on her attendant? This 18-year-old girl now had the daunting task to learn to live her life all over again inside a paralyzed body, and you're suggesting to make it easy on her attendant? This was mind-blowing. To me, this was telling her that she needed to compromise on her choices every day. This becomes a situation of loss of identity, dignity, independence, sense of self, and so much more. One day it dawned on me that if Barb had all these issues with clothes, then there must be more people out there with the same issues. I started talking to her about the possibility of creating a line of clothes specifically for people who used a wheelchair. I asked if she can help me plan a focus group meeting with other wheelchair users that she knew that could share their experiences around clothes. She agreed, 
But without wanting to disappoint me, she really didn't think what I wanted to create was possible given the many different body types and conditions associated with disability. Four women attended the meeting. They all talked freely about their clothing needs, their likes and dislikes. What worked for one person didn't work for another. What one person swore by, others would say wouldn't work for them. By the end of the night, my head was spinning with confusion and I didn't think what I wanted to create could be possible, so I put the idea aside. At the meeting, there was a young, fashionable woman named Carolyn who needed a winter coat. She'd been injured doing the sport she loved and was paralyzed from the neck down, very similar to Barb's injury. I met with her and together we discussed a coat that had both the fashion and function she required. We started sketching out ideas until we came up with the perfect design. I was so excited about creating this piece. Once completed, it turned out great and she looked awesome in it. It was super easy for her to get on and off and it fit her style perfectly. About a week after receiving her new coat, Carolyn called to tell me that people were literally stopping her on the street, complimenting her on her awesome coat, and she just wanted to thank me once again. At that moment, I kind of froze. I realized I'd given her more than just a coat. I thought to myself that this piece was potentially contributing to her sense of self, her confidence, her pride, and so much more. It felt like the best compliment I'd ever received in my entire career. A couple of months later, she reached out to me again to make her a second piece. Once again, we designed it together to ensure it had the fashion and function she required. Once completed, I delivered the new piece and it was a success. On my way home that day, I was beaming with excitement. I was literally imagining and feeling the compliments she was gonna receive. As I was experiencing all these thoughts and emotions, I had an epiphany. In the blink of an eye, it became clear to me how I could create a line of clothes for people who used a wheelchair while living with a physical disability. I immediately began to wonder what clothing was out there specifically for wheelchair users. After some preliminary research, all I found was adaptive clothing for the elderly or for people living in long-term care facilities that lacked fit or style. I learned that 84% of people who become paralyzed primarily from car accidents and sports, are quite young, between the ages of 18 and 34. I found nothing that would serve a younger demographic, nothing. I actually found this inspiring and right then decided that I would design a line of clothes for people who used a wheelchair and to just start with timeless wardrobe basics. I was deeply motivated and I worked around the clock. Within four short weeks, my new adaptive collection was complete. Finishing this line so quickly was nothing short of a miracle. Creating this groundbreaking collection, I had to redefine patterns to accommodate a disabled seated frame. I got the collection photographed, hired a website designer to create the site, and in June of 2009, I went live and Is Adaptive was born. Like any new business, it was difficult in the beginning. At that time, online stores were just starting to surface. Social media wasn't like it is today. Print was still a way to promote your product, but it was very expensive. Marketing and getting the word out there was our biggest challenge, given how diverse and numerous physical disabilities are. Eventually though, word did start to spread. The line was being called revolutionary and that I was pioneering this untapped category. Never in my wildest dreams did I ever think I would be revolutionizing or pioneering anything, let alone a new category within the fashion world. The definition of fashion changed for me and my own methods were disrupted. I couldn't design these clothes the way I had for 25 years. I needed to rethink the process and begin designing from an entirely new and innovative silhouette. Specific cuts for a seated frame and pants, for example, that wouldn't cut into your gut, bunch up in the front or ride down at the back while seated is what needed to be figured out. Full length coats that you can put on and take off while in a seated position instead of a standing position is what needed to be considered. Adding closures such as magnets for people that lack dexterity in their hands. 
Details like that can enable a person to dress independently. My fashion colleagues, however, couldn't understand why I left the world of high fashion to create this particular line of clothes. I was shunned by the fashion community. I stopped getting invited or included in fashion-related events. Instead of inspiring them, it confused them. And they didn't see fashion in the new work I was doing. And I quickly became irrelevant. But quite honestly, I did not care. It appeared to them that I'd lost my way. But in fact, I found a new path, a sense of purpose, a mission, and the possibility of making a difference in the world. I knew I was on the verge of something important. I disrupted my path, went out on a limb, not knowing what the future held. What would going out on a limb look like for you? I did a lot of soul searching during that time. I felt creating more fashion collections season after season just seemed wasteful. It didn't feel right to create more and more stuff and contribute to the environmental issues the world faces. This new work, however, was different. It was clothing that was impacting lives. As time went on, one by one, people around the world started purchasing and wearing my pieces thanks to our online store. My clients started sharing their experiences in gratitude. I've witnessed people brought to tears with this new offering now available to them. I had one woman who called to tell me that since her injury, she hadn't been able to wear a skirt. After receiving one of our skirts, she'd worn it every day since it arrived because it made her feel human again. It made her feel human. That left me speechless. That is true impact. Clothing affects our identity and empowerment regardless of who you are or what your physical situation is. Who do we serve? People who want to feel good about themselves and the clothes they wear, as we all do. They're athletes, lovers, fighters, people with goals and ambitions. I'm now very happy to report that adaptive clothing is being recognized as a new category within the fashion industry. Major brands like Tommy Hilfiger, Nike, and Target are just a few companies that have started offering adaptive lines. Several major studies have been coming out on the adaptive clothing market. 15.6% of the world population experience some form of disability. 386 million self-identify as disabled. Researchers are speculating that this category has the potential to reach $383 billion globally within the next five years. Major publications such as Forbes, Vogue Business, The Washington Post, and many others have done articles on this category which we've been included in. Back in 2005, I began looking at fashion with fresh eyes. I found myself in an untapped category which led me to create Is Adaptive. And now, major brands have followed my lead and entered this arena. I'm seeing my work used as teaching materials in universities and colleges around the world and featured in major exhibitions. What an unexpected journey. Pioneering this new category of clothing. For people who live with a physical disability to benefit from has been quite the experience. And it's something I'm grateful and honored to have done. Thank you.